1987 Philippine Constitution Definition, Nature, and Concepts of the Constitution Definition of Constitution A constitution is a system of fundamental laws for the governance and administration of a nation. It is supreme, imperious, absolute, and unalterable except by the authority from which it emanates. It is a supreme law to which all other laws must conform and in accordance with which all private rights must be determined and all public authority administered. Nature of Constitution What is the characteristic of the Constitution of the Philippines? The Philippine Constitution is written, enacted, or conventional and rigid. A written constitution's precepts are embodied in one document or set of documents. A conventional constitution is enacted formally at a definite time and place following a conscious or deliberate effort taken by a constituent body or ruler. A rigid constitution is when it may not be amended except through a special process distinct from and more involved than the method of changing ordinary laws. Cruz Constitutional Law What are the essential parts of a good written constitution? Briefly explain each. 1. Constitution of Liberty Bill of Rights A series of prescriptions setting forth the fundamental civil and political rights of the citizens and imposing certain limitations on the power of the government as a means of securing the employment of these rights. E.g. Art. 3. 2. Constitution of Government Governmental Organization and Functions relates to a series of prescriptions outlining the framework or organization of the government, enumerating its powers, laying down certain rules relative to administration and defining the electorate e.g. arts. 6, 7, 8, 9. 3. Constitution of Sovereignty Method of Amendment Provisions pointing out the mode of procedure by which formal changes in the fundamental law may be brought about e.g. arts. 17. Natura, Outline Review on Political Law, 2016. Self-executing character, the general rule and presumption is that the provisions in the Constitution are self-executing in character. Concepts of the Constitution. Under the doctrine of constitutional supremacy, if a law or contract violates any norm of the Constitution that law or contract whether promulgated by the legislative or by the executive branch or entered into by private persons for private purposes is null and void and without any force and effect. Thus, since the Constitution is the fundamental, paramount, and supreme law of the nation, it is deemed written in every statute and contract. Manila Prince Hotel v. G. Sias 1. Declaration of Principles Principles, Sections 1-6, to Binding Rules Which Must Be Observed in the Conduct of Government. Bernus. A. Democracy and Republicanism. Section 1. The Philippines is a democratic and republican state. Sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. B. Renunciation of War. Section 2. The Philippines renounces war as an instrument of national policy, adopts the generally accepted principles of international law as part of the law of the land and adheres to the policy of peace, equality, justice, freedom, cooperation, and amity with all nations. Note, renunciation of war only refers to wars of aggression, not defensive war. C. Supremacy of civilian authority over military. Section 3. Civilian authority is, at all times, supreme over the military. The armed forces of the Philippines is the protector of the people and the state. Its goal is to secure the sovereignty of the state and the integrity of the national territory. Note, civilian authority is not defeated in a joint task force between the PNP and Marines for the enforcement of law and order in Metro Manila as long as control is left to the PNP. IBPV Zamora, GR No. 141284. 2. State Policies. State Policies, Sections 7 to 28, Guide for the Orientation of the State. General Rule Article 2 of the Constitution is not intended to be self executing principles ready for enforcement through courts. Tanada v. Angara, GR No. 118295. Exceptions. Section 16. The Right to a Balanced and Healthful Ecology. Section 15 The Right to Health Section 28 The State Policy of Full Public Disclosure of All Its Transactions Involving Public Interest A. Independent Foreign Policy Section 7 The State Shall Pursue an Independent Foreign Policy In Its Relations with Other States The Paramount Consideration Shall Be National Sovereignty, Territorial Integrity, 
national interest, and the right to self-determination. B. Social justice. Section 10. The state shall promote social justice in all phases of national development. Social justice means the promotion of the welfare of all the people, the adoption by the government of measures calculated to ensure economic stability of all the competent elements of society, through the maintenance of a proper economic and social equilibrium in the interrelations of the members of the community, constitutionally, through the adoption of measures legally justifiable or extra-constitutionally, through the exercise of powers underlying the existence of all governments on the Time-honored principle of salus populi est suprema lex. Social justice, therefore, must be founded on the recognition of the necessity of interdependence among diverse and diverse units of a society and of the protection that should be equally and evenly extended to all groups as a combined force in our social and economic life. Consistent with the fundamental and paramount objective of the state of promoting the health, comfort, and quiet of all persons and of bringing about the greatest good to the greatest number. Callalang v. Williams. C. Sanctity of Family and Vital Role of Youth in Nation Building. Section 13. The state recognizes the vital role of the youth in nation building and shall promote and protect their physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual, and social well-being. It shall inculcate in the youth patriotism and nationalism and encourage their involvement in public and civic affairs. B. Amendment and Revision, 1987 Const. Art. 17 sex 1 to 4 RA number 6735 Article 17 section 1 Any amendment to or revision of this constitution may be proposed by 1 the congress upon a vote of 3 fourths of all its members or 2 a constitutional convention Article 17 section 2 Amendments to this Constitution may likewise be directly proposed by the people through initiative upon a petition of at least 12 percentum of the total number of registered voters, of which every legislative district must be represented by at least 3 percentum of the registered voters therein. No amendment under this section shall be authorized within five years following the ratification of this Constitution nor oftener than once every five years thereafter. The Congress shall provide for the implementation of the exercise of this right. Article 17, Section 3. The Congress may, by a vote of two-thirds of all its members, call a constitutional convention or, by a majority vote of all its members, submit to the electorate the question of calling such a convention. Article 17, Section 4. Any amendment to or revision of this Constitution under Section 1 hereof shall be valid when ratified by a majority of the votes cast in a plebiscite which shall be held not earlier than 60 days nor later than 90 days after the approval of such amendment or revision. Any amendment under Section 2 hereof shall be valid when ratified by a majority of the votes cast in a plebiscite which shall be held not earlier than 60 days nor later than 90 days after the certification by the Commission on Elections of the Sufficiency of the Petition. An amendment to the Constitution may be proposed by 1. Initiative 2. A Constitutional Convention or 3. Congress acting as a Constituent Assembly. A revision may only be proposed by a Constitutional Convention or Congress. It cannot be proposed via initiative. Lambino v. Kamalek. National Territory, 1987 Const. Art. I unclose arts. 1. 3-8. 33, 46 to 48, 50 and 55 to 58. The national territory comprises the Philippine archipelago with all the islands and waters embraced therein and all other territories over which the Philippines has sovereignty or jurisdiction consisting of its terrestrial, fluvial, and aerial domains including its territorial sea, the seabed, the subsoil, the insular shelves, and other submarine areas. The waters around, between, and connecting the islands of the archipelago regardless of their breadth and dimensions form part of the internal waters of the Philippines. Article 1, 1987 Constitution Archipelagic doctrine, the Philippine archipelago is one single unit. Hence, all waters within the Philippines' baselines, regardless of their breadth and distance from the nearest island coastline, are archipelagic waters. Within the archipelago, the Philippines exercises territorial sovereignty limited only by the freedom of navigation and overflight in the unclose. Unclose 3. Article 1. 
Area means the seabed and ocean floor and subsoil thereof beyond the limits of national jurisdiction. Activities in the area means all activities of exploration for and exploitation of the resources of the area. States parties means states which have consented to be bound by this convention and for which this convention is in force. Article 3. Breadth of the Territorial Sea. Every state has the right to establish the breadth of its territorial sea up to a limit not exceeding 12 nautical miles measured from baselines determined in accordance with this convention. Article 4. Outer Limit of the Territorial Sea. The outer limit of the territorial sea is the line every point of which is at a distance from the nearest point of the baseline equal to the breadth of the territorial sea. Article 5. Normal Baseline. Except where otherwise provided in this convention, the normal baseline for measuring the breadth of the territorial sea is the low water line along the coast as marked on large-scale charts officially recognized by the coastal state. Article 6. Reefs. In the case of islands situated on atolls or of islands having fringing. Reefs, the baseline for measuring the breadth of the territorial sea is the seaward low water line of the reef as shown by the appropriate symbol on charts officially recognized by the coastal state. Article 7. Straight Baselines. 1. In localities where the coastline is deeply indented and cut into or if there is a fringe of islands along the coast in its immediate vicinity. The method of straight baselines joining appropriate points may be employed in drawing the baseline from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured. 2. Where because of the presence of a delta and other natural conditions the coastline is highly unstable, the appropriate points may be selected along the furthest seaward extent of the low water line and Notwithstanding subsequent regression of the low water line, the straight baselines shall remain effective until changed by the coastal state in accordance with this convention. 3. The drawing of straight baselines must not depart to any appreciable extent from the general direction of the coast, and the sea areas lying within the lines must be sufficiently closely linked to the land domain to be subject to the regime of internal waters. 4. Straight baselines shall not be drawn to and from low tide elevations. Unless lighthouses or similar installations which are permanently above sea level have been built on them or except in instances where the drawing of baselines to and from such elevations has received general international recognition. 5. Where the method of straight baselines is applicable under paragraph 1, account may be taken in determining particular baselines of economic interests peculiar to the region concerned, the reality and the importance of which are clearly evidenced by long usage. 6. The system of straight baselines may not be applied by a state in such a manner as to cut off the territorial sea of another state from the high seas or an exclusive economic zone. Article 8. Internal Waters. 1. Except as provided in Part 4, waters on the landward side of the baseline of the territorial sea form part of the internal waters of the state. 2. Where the establishment of a straight baseline in accordance with the method set forth in Article 7 has the effect of enclosing as internal waters areas which had not previously been considered as such, a right of innocent passage as provided in this convention shall exist in those waters. Article 33. Contiguous Zone. 1. In a zone contiguous to its territorial sea, described as the contiguous zone, the coastal state may exercise the control necessary to a. Prevent infringement of its customs, fiscal, immigration, or sanitary laws and regulations within its territory or territorial sea. b. Punish infringement of the above laws and regulations committed within its territory or territorial sea. 2. The contiguous zone may not extend beyond 24 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured. Article 46. Use of Terms for the purposes of this convention. A. Archipelagic state means a state constituted wholly by one or more archipelagos and may include other islands. B. Archipelago means a group of islands, including parts of islands, interconnecting waters and other natural features which are so closely interrelated that such islands, waters, and other natural features form an intrinsic geographical, economic, and political entity or which historically have been regarded as such. Article 47. Archipelagic Baselines. 1. 
An archipelagic state may draw straight archipelagic baselines joining the outermost points of the outermost islands and drying reefs of the archipelago provided that within such baselines are included the main islands and an area in which the ratio of the area of the water to the area of the land, including atolls, is between 1 to 1 and 9 to 1. 2. The length of such baselines shall not exceed 100 nautical miles except that up to 3% of the total number of baselines enclosing any archipelago may exceed that length, up to a maximum length of 125 nautical miles. 3. The drawing of such baselines shall not depart to any appreciable extent from the general configuration of the archipelago. 4. Such baselines shall not be drawn to and from low tide elevations. Unless lighthouses or similar installations which are permanently above sea level have been built on them or where a low tide elevation is situated wholly or partly at a distance not exceeding the breadth of the territorial sea from the nearest island. 5. The system of such baselines shall not be applied by an archipelagic state in such a manner as to cut off from the high seas or the exclusive economic zone the territorial sea of another state. 6. If a part of the archipelagic waters of an archipelagic state lies between two parts of an immediately adjacent neighboring state, existing rights and all other legitimate interests which the latter state has traditionally exercised in such waters and all rights stipulated by agreement between those states shall continue and be respected. 7. For the purpose of computing the ratio of water to land under paragraph L, land areas may include waters lying within the fringing reefs of islands and atolls including that part of a steep-sided oceanic plateau which is enclosed or nearly enclosed by a chain of limestone islands and drying reefs lying on the perimeter of the plateau. 8. The baselines drawn in accordance with this article shall be shown on charts of a scale or scales adequate for ascertaining their position. Alternatively, lists of geographical coordinates of points specifying the geodetic datum may be substituted. 9. The archipelagic state shall give due publicity to such charts or lists of geographical coordinates and shall deposit a copy of each such chart or list with the Secretary General of the United Nations. Article 48. Measurement of the breadth of the territorial sea, the contiguous zone, the exclusive economic zone, and the continental shelf the breadth of the territorial sea, the contiguous zone. The exclusive economic zone and the continental shelf shall be measured from archipelagic baselines drawn in accordance with Article 47. Article 50. Delimitation of internal waters within its archipelagic waters. The archipelagic state may draw closing lines for the delimitation of internal waters in accordance with Articles 9, 10, and 11. Exclusive economic zone. Article 55. Specific legal regime of the exclusive economic zone The exclusive economic zone is an area beyond and adjacent to the territorial sea, subject to the specific legal regime established in this part, under which the rights and jurisdiction of the coastal state and the rights and freedoms of other states are governed by the relevant provisions of this convention. Article 58. Rights and duties of other states in the exclusive economic zone. 1. In the exclusive economic zone, all states, whether coastal or landlocked, enjoy, subject to the relevant provisions of this convention. The freedoms referred to in Article 87 of navigation and overflight and of the laying of submarine cables and pipelines and other internationally lawful uses of the sea related to these freedoms, such as those associated with the operation of ships, aircraft and submarine cables and pipelines and compatible with the other provisions of this convention. 2. Articles 88 to 115 and other pertinent rules of international law apply to the exclusive economic zone in so far as they are not incompatible. With this part. 3. In exercising their rights and performing their duties under this convention in the exclusive economic zone. States shall have due regard to the rights and duties of the coastal state and shall comply with the laws and regulations adopted by the coastal state in accordance with the provisions of this convention and other rules of international law in so far as they are not incompatible with this part. D. Separation of powers and checks and balances. The principle of separation of powers prevents the concentration of legislative, executive, and judicial powers to a single branch of government by deftly allocating their exercise to the three branches of government. It is now beyond debate that the principle of separation of powers 
One allows the blending of some of the executive, legislative, or judicial powers in one body. Two does not prevent one branch of government from inquiring into the affairs of the other branches to maintain the balance of power. Three, but ensures that there is no encroachment on matters within the exclusive jurisdiction of the other branches. McAlintal v. Kamalek The doctrine of separation of powers inures not by express provision of the Constitution but as an underlying principle that constitutes the bedrock of our system of checks and balances in government. It divides the government into three branches, each with well-defined powers. In its most basic concept, the doctrine declares that the legislature enacts the law, the executive implements it, and the judiciary interprets it. Each branch is considered separate, co-equal, coordinate, and supreme within its own sphere, under the legal and political reality of one overarching constitution that governs one government and one nation for whose benefit all the three separate branches must act with unity. In Reproduction of Court Records 2012 Separation of powers is fundamental in our legal system. The Constitution delineated the powers among the legislative, executive, and judicial branches of the government with each having autonomy and supremacy within its own sphere. This is moderated by a system of checks and balances carefully calibrated by the Constitution to temper the official acts of each branch, Pangalinan v. Cayetano, 2021. E. State Immunity, 1987 Const. Art. 16, Sector 3, PD Number 1445. Constitutional Basis. Section 3, Article 16. The state may not be sued without its consent. International Law Basis. Par in parum non habit imperium. An equal does not have power over an equal. A state may not be sued without its consent. However, state immunity may be waived expressly or impliedly. Express consent may be embodied in a general or special law. Consent is implied when the state enters into a contract or it itself commences litigation. BPIV, Central Bank of the Philippines 2020 While the doctrine appears to prohibit only suits against the state without its consent, it is also applicable to complaints filed against officials of the state for acts allegedly performed by them in the discharge of their duties. The doctrine of immunity from suit will not apply and may not be invoked where the public official is being sued in his private and personal capacity as an ordinary citizen. Ergo v. Swift 2014 Sovereign immunity of the state is a constitutional principle stating that there can be no legal right against the authority which makes the law on which the right depends. The doctrine makes a sovereign nation immune from suit without its consent to ensure that government time, efficiency, and resources are not sacrificed to attend to litigation filed by private parties. However, this doctrine is not absolute. The state may waive its cloak of immunity and the waiver may be made expressly or by implication. The doctrine of governmental immunity from suit cannot serve as an instrument for perpetrating an injustice on a citizen. Thus, where a state entity exercising governmental function takes away private property for public use without undergoing the appropriate legal processes, the state is not protected from suit filed by an aggrieved party. Republic vs. SPS, NOCOM 2021 When is a suit not against the state? 1. When it partakes of the nature of ordinary business rather than functions of a governmental or political character. 2. When the purpose of the suit is to compel an officer charged with the duty of making payments pursuant to an appropriation made by law in favor of the plaintiff to make such payment, since the suit is intended to compel performance of a ministerial duty. Giorno. L. 25916. 3. When it is clear that the respondent is a public officer sued in a private capacity. 4. When the action is not in personam with the government as the named defendant, but an action in rem that does not name the government in particular. 5. When the officer sued acted beyond his official capacity. F. Delegation of Powers 1987 Const. Art. 6 Sex. 1, 23, 2, and 28, 2. Rule of Non-Delegation of Legislative Power. Principle Delegata Potestas Non Potest Delegary. What has been delegated can no longer be delegated. Rationale, since the powers of the government have been delegated to them by 
The people who possess original sovereignty, these powers cannot be further delegated by the different government departments to some other branch or instrumentality of the government. General rule only Congress may exercise legislative power. Exceptions. A. Delegated legislative power to local governments. Local governments, as an immemorial practice, may be allowed to legislate on purely local matters. See Giorno. L14078. This is an express exception under the 1987 Constitution. See Article X, Sector 9 of the 1987 Constitution explicitly mentioning legislative bodies of local governments. And Section 20 providing for the coverage of legislative powers delegated to autonomous regions via the latter's organic acts. B. Constitutionally grafted presidential exceptions. I. Emergency power delegated to the executive during the state of war or national emergency, Section 23, 2, Article 6, 1987 Constitution. And 2. Certain taxing powers of the president. Section 28, 2, Article 6, 1987 Constitution. The Congress may authorize the president to fix within specified limits and subject to such limitations and restrictions as it may impose tariff rates, import and export quotas, tonnage and wharfage dues, and other duties or imposts within the framework of the National Development Program of the government. C. The extent reserved to the people by the provision on initiative and referendum. Section 1, Article 6, 1987 Constitution. D. Subordinate legislation made by administrative agencies. The principle of non-delegability should not be confused with the delegated rulemaking. Authority of Implementing Agencies, Belgica v. Ochoa, Supra. Strictly speaking, what is? Delegated is not lawmaking power, but rulemaking power, limited to a. Filling up the details of the law, or b. Ascertaining facts to bring the law into actual operation. Simplified. Who may exercise legislative powers? General rule, Congress only. Exceptions. 1. Delegation to the people by initiative and referendum. 2. Delegation to the local governments. 3. Delegation to the administrative bodies. a. Increasing complexity of the task of government. b. Lack of technical competence of Congress. c. Administrative bodies may fill up details of statute for implementation. D. Legislature may pass contingent legislation which leaves to another body the business of ascertaining facts. 4. Delegation of tariff powers to the President under Constitution, Article 6, Section 28, 2, 1987 Constitution. 5. Delegation of emergency powers to the President under Constitution, Article 6, Section 23, 2, 1987 Constitution. G. Fundamental powers of the state, police power, eminent domain, and taxation. Concept, application, and limitations, 1987 const. Art. 3. Sector 9. Art. 6. Sector 28. Art. 14. Sector 4. 3. Police power. It is the inherent and plenary power of the state which enables it to prohibit all that is hurtful to the comfort, safety, and welfare of society. Ermi de Malate Hotel and Motel Operators Association Incorporated v. Mayor of Manila. Giorno. L24693-1967. Test of valid exercise. A. Means purpose test. 1. Lawful subject, the interests of the public generally as distinguished from those of a particular class require such interference and that the subject of the measure is within the scope of the police power, Icong versus Hernandez. 2. Lawful means, the means employed are reasonably necessary for the accomplishment of the purpose and not unduly oppressive upon individuals. GR numbers 84,132 to 33. B. Reasonability test. The limit to police power is reasonability. The court looks at the test of reasonability to decide whether it encroaches on the right of an individual. So long as legitimate means can reasonably lead to create that end, it is reasonable. In fine, there must be a concurrence of a lawful subject and lawful method. The law is a legitimate exercise of police power if it has general welfare for its object. When conditions so demand as determined by the legislature, property rights must bow to the primacy of police power because property rights, though sheltered by due process, 
must yield to the general welfare and to the promotion of public good. Republic vs. Maria Bassa Express Jeepney Operators and Drivers Association 2022 and Bank. Scope and Limitations The state in order to promote the general welfare may interfere with personal liberty, with property and with business and occupations. Persons may be subjected to all kinds of restraints and burdens in order to secure the general comfort, health and prosperity of the state and to this fundamental aim of our government, the rights of the individual are subordinated GR no L24670-1979. As police power derives its existence from the very existence of the state itself, it does not need to be expressed or defined in its scope. So it is that constitutions do not define the scope or extent of the police power of the state. What they do is to set forth the limitations thereof. The most important of these are the Due Process Clause and the Equal Protection Clause. Giorno L. 79-95-1957 Police power has been characterized as the most essential, insistent, and the least limitable of powers, extending as it does to all the great public needs. Ermita Malade Hotel and Motel Operators Association Incorporated v. Mayor of Manila, who may exercise police power. Generally, legislature. Delegated. 1. The President and Executive Agencies. 2. Administrative Bodies, including the Constitutional Commissions. 3. Lawmaking Bodies of LGU. Limitations on Delegation of Police Power. 1. It must be made through an express grant by law. 2. It must be exercised within the territorial jurisdiction of the LGU or the statutory mandate of the delegate and 3. The delegate's exercise must not be contrary to law. Eminent domain. The power of eminent domain is the inherent right of the state to condemn private property to public use upon payment of just compensation. The right of eminent domain is the ultimate right of the sovereign power to appropriate not only the public but the private property of all citizens within the territorial sovereignty to public purpose. Gear number 16535-2015. Two mandatory requirements should underlie the government's exercise of the power of eminent domain. A. It is for a particular public purpose, and B. Just compensation should be paid to the property owner, GR number 1766252010. It is well settled that eminent domain is an inherent power of the state that need not be granted even by the fundamental law. Sector 9, Art 3 merely imposes a limit on the Government's exercise of this power, GR number 129079-1998. Taxation. It is the power by which the state raises revenue to defray the necessary expenses of the government. It is the enforced proportional contributions from persons and property levied by the state for the support of the government and for all public needs. It is as broad as the purpose for which it is given. Purpose. A. To raise revenue. B. Tool for regulation. C. Protection slash power to keep alive. Lifeblood theory. Taxes are the lifeblood of the government for without taxes the government can neither exist nor endure. A principal attribute of sovereignty, the exercise of taxing power derives its source from the very existence of the state whose social contract with its citizens obliges it to promote public interest and common good. The theory behind the exercise of the power to tax emanates from necessity. Without taxes, government cannot fulfill its mandate of promoting the general welfare and well-being of the people. GR number 1491102003. Scope and Limitation General Limitations A. The power to tax exists for the general welfare. It should be exercised only for A. Public Purpose B. Might be justified as for public purpose even if the immediate beneficiaries are private individuals. C. Tax should not be confiscatory. If a tax measure is so unconscionable as to amount to confiscation of property, the court will invalidate it. But invalidating a tax measure must be exercised with utmost caution, otherwise the state's power to legislate for the public welfare might be seriously curtailed. D. Taxes should be uniform and equitable, Section 28, 1, Article 6, 1987. Constitution. Judicial review for unconscionable and unjust tax amounting to confiscation of property. The legislature has discretion to determine the nature, object, extent, 
coverage, and situs of taxation. But where a tax measure becomes so unconscionable and unjust as to amount to confiscation of property, courts will not hesitate to strike it down. The power to tax cannot override constitutional prescriptions. GR number 109289. 1994. Specific limitations. A. Uniformity of taxation. Simply geographical uniformity meaning it operates with the same force and effect in every place where the subject of it is found. Rule does not prohibit classification for purposes of taxation provided the requisites. For valid classification are met Giorno. L. 237934. 1968. B. Tax exemptions. No law granting any tax exemption shall be passed without the concurrence of a majority of all the members of Congress, Section 28.4, Article 6, 1987 Constitution. There is no vested right in a tax exemption. Being a mere statutory privilege, a tax exemption may be modified or withdrawn at will by the granting authority, Republic v. Caguio, GR No. 168584-2007.